Hello everyone, Suzanne here. Welcome back to my channel. Um, today I'm going to be talking about how you can use your spares. This may be a familiar sight if you've done at least one diamond painting. Yep, the spares that you're left over with. But you know, that's a good thing because it means you haven't run out of them during your diamond painting. So with this tub here, when I did my first diamond painting, I bung them all in. Didn't think about keeping them in their colour packets or anything like that. Just thought I'd dip them into the tub, use them up for other things. Um, I've also in here got the ones that annoyingly don't come with the DMC numbers when purchased them. So um, I use these ones to do things like plant pot holders, uh, candle holders, and I've made a couple of pendants where I didn't necessarily need to know what colours I was going to use. So like a camouflage one and a dog tooth. So I've done that with those as well. Um, however, this is probably more common if you do a lot of diamond painting, the storage boxes, all numbered. I've got quite a few of these storage boxes now. And I also keep a tub for those that won't fit in here. So these are like duplicate spares, <laughs> spares of spares, <laughs> with a list of what's included. Um, so yeah, you end up with lots of colours and you want to use them rather than just have a collection. Well, if you like me, that is. Um, I also have this file. And in the file, it's a list of the diamond painting colours that I have. And I just write on whether they're square or round um, under each listing. So you can see there, um, and I keep this up to date. If I use them all, I obviously cross them off and just keep it up to date so I know what I've got in stock. Um, they're also useful for colour reference. So if you do run out of a particular colour, you might be able to find one that's quite close match to it. Um, so yeah, I found this on, I think it was just a DMC colour chart. Um, thought yep yeah, that would be useful so use that so I refer to that a bit later in this video so another top tip there for keeping control over your spares and the colours and what you could use so now we'll go on to what we can do with the spares making your own chart So you've got all your spares organised into different colours and um, you take a photo and think, gosh, that would make a lovely diamond painting. Or you see an image on the internet and you think, right, I would really like to do that. Um, if you do get an image off the internet and it's copyrighted, please contact the people who own the copyright to ask if you can use their image. Um, it's only fair. The artist put in a lot of creative time. Um, and you don't want to be stealing other people's work without permission. So for this video, I saw a beautiful design that I absolutely fell in love with. It's actually a tarot card and it's by Cathy McClelland from the Star Tarot. So I contacted Cathy and she very, very kindly allowed me to use the image for the purpose of this video and for me to make a picture of it for my own personal use. It's not to be reproduced in any other way and I need to make that very clear that um, the artists and the creatives deserve for people to respect their copyrights. Okay, if you're interested in seeing Cathy's Tarot Pack and Cathy's website, I'll put the link in the description for you. So I'm just going to move on the spares off my PC here and open it up. And this is going to be the start of showing you how you create your own pattern for diamond painting. Okay, so it's me, Suzanne. <laughs> okay, so here's Kathy's website. I'll quickly show you that. And um, the Star Tarot. So the image that I am. Um, using today is the justice card here 
Isn't that incredible? And of course, I'm a Libra, so I love the Justice card. I've got my laptop open at the website that I use because I just think it's the easiest one, best one that I've found. This is called pixelstitch.net. Again, I will put the link in the description below. I'm not affiliated with the site at all. I just, it's my preference to go to there to make any patterns. Um, now I'm just going to scroll up here because here we have a donation link. And um, of course, when you're using other people's products, it's always good to give back. So please do donate if you can. Again, I, I stress that um, I'm not affiliated with this site at all. Okay, so to get started, we click on this link here to select a picture. So I select my picture and it inserts it into the, oh gosh, it's such a beautiful design. It inserts it into the website. Now here we have options. Now the width of number of stitches I'm going to put at 80. Choice of colours, um, I'll probably leave a 60, should I? No, actually I'm going to put in, see what the maximum is, I think it's 120, yes. The count Aida is going to be 12, however that is slightly too big for the diamond um, squares, so I will come back to that soon. Right, we're going to choose DMC colours. But here we've got a colour selection and it shows all of the different colours. OK, so we have to absolutely take out numbers 1 to 35 because they don't exist in diamond painting. So you just go along and click on the numbers to remove them from the patterning when it creates the pattern. OK, so we just continue to do that. Where's number 17? Um, there it is, 17, 18, 19. So you get the gist anyway. Uh, 21, 22. Now, this is where the book that I showed you earlier is well, incredible for telling you which numbers you have. So you can refer to your book, and what you need to do is take out any number that you don't have in the book. This can take a bit of time but it saves absolute guesswork when it comes to once you've created your pattern because if it puts a number in that you don't have you either have to guess um, to another close number which might actually not be quite right or you um, have to go back and redo it again. So it's worth taking a bit of time to select the colours that you're going to be using. I did this earlier, so I'm going to um, just stop the video there and take out the numbers that I don't have. So I've just spent a bit of time going through some of the numbers that I don't have. I don't actually have all of these colours, but for the sake of time, I think it's um, a good example anyway. So once you've taken all of the colours out that you don't have, I'm going to go to advanced options. So I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. Advanced options here. Right, so they want to stay all the same. And then here, save options. We want symbols with coloured boxes. You can choose numbers if you prefer to use numbers rather than the symbols on your grid. And we want to show grid there. Okay, now at this point you get your picture of your image. Right, I've never used file format actually. Oh no, I want to keep it as PDF. I wouldn't want it on an Excel document. Okay, I'm going to create an embroidery pattern. And there you can see the image has now changed to a pixelated image. Now this shows you the resolution that your picture will end up in. So, and 
down here, it will also tell you the approximate image size. However, this is important because it's 12 count AIDA, we're going to print at 84%. So this will be smaller. Okay, just something to bear in mind. Okay, so I would like a higher resolution for my image. So I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to change the width number of stitches, which makes a bigger picture. So mm, I'll put it at 120 instead. Okay, so again, everything else has remained the same. Create embroidery pattern. And you do this until you're happy with the resolution. Now you can see there's more detail on the picture. And then you can check the size it is. Make sure that you're happy with that size. Okay, and it also tells you how many stitches, which means, you know, how many diamonds you will need, and the number. Okay, you can ignore this because obviously we're not using threads. Down here, we have all of the colours and how many of those colours you will need. That's important if you're using your spares because sometimes you may not have this many. So, scrolling down. I mean, I, I used 120 colours. Oh, I didn't take... Uh, oh yeah, no, that's right. So, you can reduce the number of colours if you want to. So, say you want to only want 60 colours. You can do that. Again, create embroidery pattern. We'll reduce the number of your colours. But look, it still looks lovely. and then it will have less colours for you. So, it's really, really great website to have a play with. Of course, you can make that. Mm, should we try 160? See what happens. There we go. This will impact on your printing, however, because if you're like me, you have an A4 printer um, and so it's going to create lots of pages that you're going to end up having to stick together. So, something else to bear in mind. Okay, I'm going to change this back to, I'll say 120 because 80 wasn't really clear enough for my liking. Create embroidery pattern. Now, the only time that it will remove any of these choices up here is once you save the pattern. So if you want to keep playing with it with the colours, because that can, like I say, that can take sort of 10 minutes, 15 minutes or so. So um, just make sure that you're happy with it before you do anything else. Okay. So we're happy with it. We're happy with the size of it. We're going to save the embroidery pattern. Okay. It's saving and it's going to give me a PDF document, which will be down here. So I now open this, and on the first page is usually an A4 um, coloured page to show you what it's going to look like. This isn't the, this isn't the one that you're going to place all your diamonds on, it's too small. So I think it could probably be like a millimetre titchy witchy diamonds. Um, here is your list of colours that you're going to need. Telling you how many, again ignore the stitches, you know that don't we? It will take 967 of your spare diamonds of that colour to create the picture. Of course if you're, if you're not um, bothered about the resolution, you probably won't need as many, it's because I've made it bigger. I've made a bigger picture here. Again, it's not going to turn out that size though because we're going to reduce the printing size. Okay, so you keep scrolling down. Here is your grid that you'll be um, making sticky and applying your diamond um, diamonds to. 
So there's pages and pages. Okay, so in this case, I've got four pages I would have to put together. Okay, so at this point is when you would print. So go to print. Okay, here's my printer. Now, you might not want to print the front page. Um, depends if you want to have a, um, a picture to refer to as well. You print the second page. I think that's important because then you've got the grid in front of you on a piece of paper and you can also then, if you're going to kit up in one to however many colours, it's easier to do on a piece of paper. So I would print page two and then you want to print the four pages as well onto A4. Now when I print I use slightly higher grade paper so the normal paper is 80 grams. I think I usually print on about 110, 120 to get a firmer background. We will be applying um, the stick though so that does make it firmer anyway. But if you can just invest a little bit in the, um, in the paper quality. So you print that, print as you normally do and I'll come back once I've got my prints. Okay, sorry, I got a bit excited there and forgot to mention the scale that you're printing. So you've chosen which pages you want to print. If you want the front page, I will print that separately at 100% um, and the second page at 100%. So print page one if you want it and two at 100% and then you would be printing Page three, two, one, two, three, four. So three, four, five, six, three to page six. That's to make sure I've got all of the design pages. And I'm going to print in colour, not on both sides, on A4 at 84%. Okay, and that is to make sure these little squares fit the square diamond. Um, if, if they're round, I think they might be slightly bigger. You might have to fiddle with the scale if you're doing round diamonds. Okay, so at this point, once you're not excited as I am at the moment, you press print. And that will print the pages for you. Okay, I'll come back. Okay, so here I've got my printouts. Um, I've printed the first page, just to show you. Now I've printed it on normal quality paper, 80 GSM. So you can see it's quite um, floppy, as well as my grid. However, the the um, the what would be the canvas I've printed on slightly thicker paper. I don't know if you can see the difference here or not really. This is 120 GSM and that's just really to give it a bit more stiffness um, than the usual quality paper. So it's up to you whether you decide to do that because you would be sticking on a double-sided plastic to create the stick anyway. When, when I printed mine, I did it slightly bigger. I decided to do a slightly bigger picture. So I've got these pages, which I'm going to have to stick together to create one um, size of what would be the canvas. Okay, so that's the next step for me is I'm going to keep the edges as the canvas would normally have. However, these sides will need to be trimmed to fit together. Okay, so I'm going to cut those and I will give that back once that's done. Okay, so I've now cut out the sides that I wanted to just move those so you can see a bit clearly. I've cut out the sides that I didn't need. So on this one, for example, I've cut the side, this side and the bottom, keeping the number of the page here. 
for page two, I cut out the very same size, this side and the bottom. So when I put these together, they will overlap like that. Okay, and then I will turn it over and stick a little bit of sellotape in the back to hold them together. So that's one and two. And then for number three, I've cut the bottom, but I've left the side just to have a bit of room when I'm doing my diamond painting. So that's going to be the top level once it's all stuck together. Then I've got, again, the same for page four, down the side, down the bottom, keeping number four. So when I slot it into place, it's going to go under page one. I hope you can see that okay. Okay, so it's basically piecing the pieces together. Okay, number five down the bottom, down the side will fit under these pieces and be sellotaped. You don't have to go mad with the sellotape at the back, it's just really to hold the pieces into place, ready to um, put the sticky on. So and I will start page one, page two. We don't want to stick it on the front, obviously, because we are going to cover this with our diamonds. So we just want to stick it at the side. You could stick it at the top a bit. I might actually do that. Sorry for the noise of the cell tape. I might actually do that. Stick it there. Just to give it a bit of help when you turn over. Okay, actually that worked quite well. And then I'm just going to put a strip down the middle and a little bit just on the end. Oh, so the tape when you lose the end is so annoying, isn't it? Okay. Put a little bit there as well. Okay, turn it over so you can see and do exactly the same for page three. Okay, it's this bit really the first bit to make sure it's lined up so it doesn't go off the grid. <laughs> Again, and something new with sticking it at the top works really well, so you're not losing the positioning. Hmm. It's nice to learn something new, isn't it? Stick some down there. Some down the bottom. Okay. So that's the start. Number four. Okay. So, same principle. Squaring it up, making sure. I think I've got a bit of extra white there. So, I'm just going to cut a bit more off. I just use my scissors. You might want to use a craft knife for a guillotine when you do this, but there was that right bit. There. Just take that little bit of extra white off there. It's just worth taking a bit of time to line it up. Make sure that um, it's right before you stick it down. Because once the double-sided sticky tape goes on, it. So again, stick it down the side, sorry. I've inserted a bit of sticky there this time. And to turn it over and stick on the back. So 
So I'm going to keep doing this until all of these pieces are on and we have a full sheet. So I'll stop it there and we will return once it's done. Okay, so once you've stuck all of your picture together, yours should hopefully look something like this with your image. These are the little bits to be aware of because they're not stuck down yet. They're quite vulnerable on the edges. So here's the one that I've made. Again, I've got a, a bit there. That I'm just needing to be a bit careful with. Okay, so when you get to this point and it's all stuck together, you need to start to apply the double-sided stick. Now, I bought these from Amazon. They were very reasonable um, priced. Um, <clears throat> I think it was, I got 10 sheets and I think it was about eight pounds or so from memory. Not 100% sure, I can't quite remember. So, I'm just going to sit down here. This bit is a little bit fiddly. Okay, so the first thing I would do is with the A4 sheet is work out which way round your sheet's going to go. So for me, because I've got this vulnerable bit here, I'm going to start doing mine portrait. Because if I did it landscape, it means that there's only a little bit for the next sheet that, you know, I, th I think it's better to cover it in one full sheet like that. However, the bottom bit means that then I will be able to use a landscape piece to finish off the bottom. And that means that I will only need one more sheet to finish it off. So I can use an A4 sheet here, I can trim this and use this trim here. So I'm just going to line it up. Now, I would also advise that, as you probably know, doing diamond paintings, there's usually a little bit of overlap of stick. And that's because if it's not quite square, you run the risk of not getting stick down the side here. So, you know, you've spent all of this time making the grid just overlap it a little bit to ensure that every little part of your picture is covered. Okay, so I'm just going to measure, because we don't want this overlapping. This should be quite tight together. So I'm just going to mark, if I can find my pen going to mark where I can cut, give it a little bit of extra and then I can cut this bit off for here and I'm just going to use scissors. Um, So I've now got my pieces all ready and know where they're going to go. I hope you can see this. Okay, so actually because that's the cut end, another little tip here, I'm going to turn this over. So I've got my cut end here and then I'm going to use the very square end of this here. So this is my cut here. And that's just to make sure that this bit is tight. Okay, so there's a little tip for you. Right, okay. Um, I'm just trying to work out where the best place is for me to start applying. I think really this piece is the natural place to start for me. I hope when you come to do yours that, um, you know, you find it self-explanatory, that, that bit 
Um, I'm just going to move my camera over a bit because I realise uh, for me to be able to see and apply it properly. <laughs> I might have to bend my picture a little bit. We'll see. I'll stand up to do this. Sorry if I wiggle the camera then. Um, I don't want to get in the way of your viewing, but I also don't want to mess this up at this point. So I've started peeling back a little bit of the corner here. So that's the stick. You can probably see the gloss there. I'm also going to peel back a bit of this corner here because I'm not going to take it off in one fell Excuse my nails, by the way, they are, I've been painting and they are rather grotty. Okay. All right. So we've got the stick here. So I'm going to start in this left hand corner. So I've just peeled back and I'm going to peel back at the top only so it looks a bit like that and that's just to get a little bit of control to start with in fact to make it even better i'm going to fold that over okay i think it's not flapping in my way so as i say i'm going to overlap it a little bit making sure that it's straight down this side as well Okay, so I think about here is good. Press it down. So you can see at this point, I've made sure that it definitely has an overlap here. It's covered the vulnerable bits here. Covered the vulnerable bits here. So I can now peel back slowly. press at the same time so to try and get an even distribution of the stick without any creases okay so you can see under here I'm just pulling this flap here and pressing as I go okay And at this point, I think you probably think, oh, that's starting to look like the diamond paintings that I buy with the, um, with the paper covering the design. It's exciting, isn't it? Okay, so first one, all applied and get rid of that. So here we have it. First sheet applied, nice and straight. Um, so the next one, I think I'll do this one next to it before the other one. Okay, so again, I'm going to peel back now then, which was my cut. This is my cut edge, remember? So that's going to go there. So I'm going to peel back this corner. Just using my thumb to... making sure that the glossy side is here. So again, I'm going to fold over the, let's pull it back a bit, and fold over the start. To keep control. Then I mean, it doesn't really matter if this bit isn't, you know, if you just start here, but try and get it as lined up as you can. What you do need is the stick in this gap here. So line it up, press down, just like you did the first one. Okay, grab this and pull. 
Okay, and press it as we go. Now you can see this line is lovely and tight together. So just spend a little bit of time making sure that that happens. Pulling the backing as we press down. So I'm going quite quickly here, um, but you might want to just take your time with it. Make sure that you're happy. Be brave. It's a little bit like after all the work you've put in so far. Right, now as I said, the bottom, I'm going to do landscape. Just checking again that I have enough now then. Do I have enough now? So I put it quite high at the top. Ooh, it's a little bit scary there. Let me just have another check. Making sure. Ooh, do you know? <laughs> it, it does scare me a bit here. Because look how close that is to the edge. I'm going to go for it and hope for the best. If not, I'll just have to add another strip on. I don't know why, maybe I'll put it a bit too far up at the beginning when I measured first time. Anyway. If we have to add another strip, we will. So, just making sure mind, that the it's the bottom bit that I'm taking away, not the top. It's so thin. It's a bit like um, if you've ever used double-sided sticky tape for card making or anything. It's like a big sheet of that, so it's not like it's not as thick as an overhead projector. Again, it's done it that way around, right? And not for it to be um, that's it. Okay, so I've got this stick that side. And the reason I didn't use these was because once it had been taken off, I didn't want to compromise it. Um, you never know. I was probably just being a bit fussy. If I'd run out of corners, I'd have definitely tried it. Okay, so I'm doing the same thing again. <clears throat> now this one looks quite creased actually, so hopefully, hopefully that will apply okay. Right, so again, I'm going to line it up with both sheets getting it as tight as I can before pressing down there. Again, you might want to take a bit of time doing that. Um, grabbing hold of the flap that I created. And I've got a crease now already. I'm not so happy with this sheet. I'm going to firmly press it and try and get rid of a crease there. Perhaps it's because I'm doing landscape. Or perhaps it was creased. I'm just going to use my thumbnail to press it down as I go. sheet is happy. Mm, no, really not happy at all. Most of them are coming out, it's just this one here. I'm not being friendly. 
Let's have a look and see what's going on under there. I think it was probably the sheet itself. I'm just going to use my finger and try and smooth that out a bit. wrong at this stage and I'm just going to keep going with it. just cutting it here just in case that releases a bit of that um, if it was an air bubble or something like that so I'm just cut splitting it keep that out of the way just a bit fiddly because this side is fine Right, okay. Because that has started to crease, of course, it's lifted and made a gap at the bottom there. But hopefully, we can rectify it with another sheet. This is a lot happier being a smaller piece. starts. We'll know that once we get down there. Okay, so I have got a gap here at the bottom. So I will have to use a bit to patch in. But I have loads of this, so what I'm going to do is cut on the already cut side, remember, so this is my cut side here. We want to keep that bit there as straight as we can. So I'm going to cut off the bit of the excess here to use at the bottom in that gap once this bit's on. Okay, so we don't need this much at the bottom here. So I'm going to trim that off a bit, use my pen, make sure I've got plenty this time. <laughs> it was a bit of a risk that last one wasn't it? Anyway, if anything it showed you what to do if this happens. Right, make sure I've got my cut, cut edge there normal edge here. Again, we're going to find the glossy side, make the pull, and this corner, I'm just going to bring it a bit closer to me, is going to it right okay, I can't quite see where that edge is again it's just a it's just worth taking a bit of time sorry guys I just need to um, get it a bit closer I don't want another <laughs> problem. That's, that's it. I'm 
bit of a gap there. Not too bad. Right. And I have got a bit of a line here, but because the diamonds are going to go over the top, I, yeah. I'm going to cut along here and line it up a bit better. So, just a bit of patching. It's not too bad there, but we want it to be good, don't we? So, again. Close to the line as you can. See, so I've patched it along. So it's going off a bit again there. Huh? Oh dear, that last bit. Oh. this bit in. Okay, so again, if you've got a straight edge rather than a cut edge, that's always better. I'm going to patch that bit to there and then because that's slightly different, I'm going to move it again. Okay, so I'll cut it off here. Exciting, nearly ready. Glossy side to the picture. Now, this isn't going to be straight because it's going to go up the way. Like that. So. Just. Push it against and then take the backing off. Okay. I'm just going to do this little bit here. I don't know if it really needs it, but because it's an edge, I'm just doubly making sure. So we don't need all of this. Trim it to there. At least by seeing things going slightly wrong, at least you see that we can, it's fixable. So, nothing to be scared of. <laughs> Just trying to get this corner off because, again, like I said, we need to make sure it's the correct. Hmm. What's going on with this now? Hmm. Definitely doesn't want to pull off the backing on there. Okay, trim that little bit off. Let's see if that helps. Good. Make the little pulley for the back. Again, stick to the edges and then guide it into place. There we are. How was that then? <laughs> How was that then? bit annoying about that but anyway it's fine. Okay so after all of this we now have a picture ready to diamond paint. Um, I may well when 
I get to this bit, do another video to show you. Um, just so that you can see. I think it's going to be fine. I'll probably start at the bottom rather than starting at the top. Let me turn it round. No, I don't want to do that because the symbols will be wrong. Anyway, I'm going to sort it out. There we are. So, I hope this video has been useful. I hope that you're excited about having a go at this. Remember, if you use anybody's image, please do ask permission. And um, have fun. If you've got any questions, please comment below. Or if you want to give anybody else some tips that you found, then please, again, comment below. Thanks, everybody. Have fun out there. Hello there. So in the excitement of um, my last video, I realised I hadn't shown the patching very clearly, nor face up of me. <laughs> so apologies for that. OK, I'm now hand holding my video, so I'm going to show you what this creasing looks like. It's quite bad. So I am going to apply some diamonds to see if they'll sit okay before I even start doing anything else. So I'll report back soon. Okay, so here you can see that I've started over the crease, applying the diamonds. And actually, you can't really tell. But also, over here, where was it here, I scraped with my pen a bit and it helped. So I'm just going to scrape over these bits. You can see it sort of flattens down a bit. I think this one's the worst bit. But even so, I might be able to just rub it out. Um, so that might be worth a try as well if you get one of these creases. Just run the pen over them. They might raise up again, I'm not sure, but. We'll see. Okay guys, so at least you've been able to see what happens if you do get a crease. It's not the end of the world. Obviously we want to avoid it as much as we can. Okay, so good luck with it and I hope you enjoy. <laughs>